Right, so this is the colour scheme and method that I've settled on for my grots. I have over 140 boys in Gretchen alone, so I want to work quickly, but also to a high-ish standard. Skin is a key feature of any orc army, so this will be my main focus here. I'm going to start by applying Wire Flesh Green with my airbrush. This can be done by hand, but I have so many models to get painted, I need to work as efficiently as I can. I also need to get better with my airbrush, so this is a good way to get some practice in. 40 models later, I then apply a top-down highlight with Camouflage Green. Now using a brush, I start by painting all the metal parts black. On this grot, that's the gun and their melee weapon. I paint the fur loin cloth in terracotta, which is a nice complementary red-brown to the grot's skin. The leathery parts are painted with parasite brown. I use bone white on the bandage wraps, teeth and nails. I'm using a wet palette so I can batch paint and keep coming back to these colours throughout the process without having to worry about them drying out. It also means I can easily touch up any areas that I might accidentally catch when picking out the details. Slap some gun metal on all the metal parts. Add some watered down black into the eye sockets. I then water down a pink and apply this to the lips and gum areas. I touch up where I've been a little bit clumsy with wire flesh green and bone white to bring the teeth out again. I wash the skin with a bile tan green. While the green dries, I pick out some of the details on the gun in brass. This helps give a little variation, adding to the orky scrappy look. I'm using a Latoc blue for my Death Skulls blue, if that's how you pronounce it. I stipple this onto the odd metal plate to eventually give the effect of chipped paint. Then I apply my black brown dip wash, courtesy of Midwinter Mini's recipe, to the entire mini. I pay extra attention to the recessed areas. Now to work on some of the highlights. I water down the camouflage green and apply this to all the muscles, ear tops and the head in any area that I want to highlight. It looks very bright at this stage, but it will calm down a little when it dries. As orcs have red blood, I knew I wanted to make the nose, ear tips, elbows and other potentially scuffed areas a ready pink. I used watered down terracotta as a kind of glaze for this step. This is to simulate blood vessels near the surface and gives a nice contrast to the green. I then use an orange rust liquid pigment quite liberally on the gun to give a nice rusty ramshackled look. I went over some of the skin with the watered down camouflage green again just to tie some of those pinker areas in. I pick out the eyes with the bone white and went over the teeth again focusing on the tips. I then finish the eyes with a flash kit's yellow. If you mess up the eyes you can easily fix this with a touch of slightly watered down black. Then a last touch of the black brown wash on the weapons and fur. Let this dry completely and dry brush the fur, wraps and any other textured areas with a little bone white for easy quick highlights. Lastly, after completing the 12 minis, I wanted to bring back some of the original colour. So I touched up the lips, metal areas and then the leather with their respective base colours, only focusing on the edges. You don't need to cover the areas here, it's just a touch to bring back the colours after the wash. And that's it. It might seem like a lot of steps, but by having the colours on the wet palette, I was able to quickly swap between them to touch up mistakes, blend areas and bring back colours easily. All in took about an hour of painting time for this guy. I painted him on his own and then I had to go at batch painting 11 more with these steps and got them done in 6 hours, so that's roughly 30 minutes per model. It's not super speed painting, but it's good enough for me. Wet palettes aren't for everyone, and I'm very new to them, but I can already see how they benefit my painting style. I base them with the coffee grounds and acrylic paint combo, another tip from Guy at Midwinter Minis. I'm curious to see how this lasts, but it goes on quite easily and dries really solid. It took me a while to settle on the colour for their bases, but I think orange adds a great contrast and a kind of desert, arid mud feels very in keeping with the orc aesthetic. By working on one model from start to finish before committing to batch painting, it really helps me figure out the colour scheme and made the process much quicker in the end. If you like this video, I'll be working my way through my enormous unpainted orc army over the next few weeks, so subscribe to see more like this. Let me know what you think, and thank you for watching.